Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to tonight's City Council meeting. Today is Tuesday, October 1st, and uh, we certainly want to thank everybody for being here. We'll start our meeting by introducing you to uh, your City Council. Council members Erpenbach? Here. Jameson? Here. Karski? Here. Rolfing? Staggers? Present. Aguilar? Here. Anderson? Here. Entman? Here. Thank you very much. Um, we're very blessed to have uh, Pastor Nick Collins with Hope Lutheran Church here with us uh, again. Uh, welcome, Pastor. Thank you. Uh, we start our meetings with an invocation. What we'd ask you to do is to stand. Uh, Pastor Nick will uh, give us his blessing. And then if you'd remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance, uh, certainly we'd appreciate that. <clears throat> Loving and gracious God, you are indeed the giver of all good gifts, and we thank you today for all your blessings, for the successful growth of our community, for our mayor, for the various levels of city officials, and in particular for this assembled city council. We ask that you would bless them with wisdom, with guidance, with courage and strength. Be with them in their deliberations and help them to be wise in the decisions they make for the good of all those who have placed their trust and confidence in their leadership. Give them insight to lead with integrity, that their decisions may reflect what is right and just and good Keep them from short-sightedness and pettiness. Help them to make decisions that are for the good of all and guard them from blind self-interest. Dear Lord, grant them the humility to always seek your will in all they do and say. And give us all an assurance of what would please you and what would benefit those who live and work in and around our beloved city of Sioux Falls. In service to you we pray. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you again for being here tonight. Uh, Amy, would you mind coming forward? Welcome. Nice to have you here. I do have a proclamation that I'd like to read on behalf of the people of our, of our great city. The proclamation reads, Whereas over four million women are victims of severe assault by their intimate partners annually in the United States, and nearly one in four women are likely to be abused by a partner in her lifetime. Whereas Children who grow up in violent homes are abused and neglected at a higher rate than the national average. Whereas in 2012, 1,380 domestic assault cases and 245 protection order violation cases were investigated by our Sioux Falls Police Department and the Minnehaha County Sheriff's Office. Whereas in 2012, 47% of the murders in South Dakota <coughs> were as a result of domestic violence. Whereas, a dedicated group of citizens have been fighting domestic violence together through the Minnehaha County Family Violence Council for 31 years. Whereas, wearing a purple ribbon during the month of October and attending the Take Back the Night Dinner program and Candlelight March on October 10th, 2013 at the Old Courthouse Museum at 6 p.m. will demonstrate your support for the victims of domestic violence. Whereas, the voices of victims offer us important insight into the personal pain and loss that victims endure and are voices that deserve our attention, our respect, and our support. Now, therefore, I, Mike Cuther, the mayor of the city of Sioux Falls, do hereby proclaim the month of October of this year, 2013, as Domestic Violence Awareness Month in our town, and I urge all citizens to become actively involved to work towards improving victim safety and holding perpetrators of domestic abuse accountable for their actions against individual victims and our society as a whole. Amy is the operations director for Children's Inn and our Bright Start program here in Sioux Falls. Uh, Amy, thanks for all you do. And on behalf of the people, uh, again, we, we're just very, very blessed to have you here. Can we just uh, acknowledge Amy, please?
Well, Council, we'll now move on to our consent agenda. Uh, Council, any uh, changes or motions? Move to approve, Erpenbach. Second, Entman. Council Erpenbach has made a motion to approve our consent agenda, and it was seconded by Councillor uh, Entman. Uh, any, yes, Councillor uh, Staggers? Yes, I, I'd like to pull two items off the consent calendar dealing with co core facade revitalization. And Councillor Staggers, that was core, co the core facade revitalization. Was there two of them? Yeah, there are two of them. Uh -huh. Okay. Councilor Staggers, I, Tamara would just like you to repeat those. I apologize. Oh. One was, uh, I heard the facade. Yeah, core facade revitalization. And so there, there's two of those. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now we mm -hmm. get it. Enough. Thank you. That's it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Get those, Tamara. There's been a motion to um, pull two items off of the consent agenda. Uh, they're both titled core facade revitalization. One is for uh, the vendor Phillips Redevelopment, and the other one is Larson Square LLC. Is there a second? Mr. Mayor, point of order. You, you don't need a second. We don't. Okay. No. Just it, do it, it just comes off. One council member can do that. Okay. Thank you. Very good. And for clarification, will these be heard before item 20? I think so, yeah. Yes, that's fine, yes. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Council, any uh, other motions or? Yes, Mayor. Oh, I'm Councilor Jameson. I have a motion to uh, amend the consent agenda by correcting the September 17, 2013 City Council meeting minutes. Correct them as follows. Item 26, amendment A, B, replace 75,000 with 97,500 and replace funds will come from the code enforcement consultation on amendments, $50,000, multimedia support, customer service letter, content review of 25000 with funds will come from the museum annual storage expense of 97500 I'd second that. Um, there's been a motion to amend the consent agenda by correcting the seven. September 17th City Council meeting minutes and uh, do I have to re repeat those tomorrow? Thank you. You've got those. Very good. Uh, there, it has been seconded. Uh, any further discussion on that item, Councillor? Can we have a vote, um, roll call vote please? A vote to approve the amendment. Council members Erpenbach? Yes. Jamison? Yes. Karski? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Entman? Yes. Thank you. That is passed seven to zero. Uh, any other changes, Council? Very good. Could I have a vote to approve the consent agenda as amended? Council members Erpenbach? Yes. Jamison? Yes. Karski? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Entman? Yes. Thank you. That is passed 7 to 0. We'll now move on to our regular agenda. And Council, any changes? Yes, Move approval, Aguilar. Aguilar. Thank you, Councilor Aguilar. Second, Edmund. There has been a motion to approve, and it was seconded by Councilor Anderson, Jr. Um, if there is no discussion, a roll call vote, please. Council members Erpenbach? Yes. Jamison? Yes. Karski? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Entman? Yes. Thank you. That is passed 7 to 0. Uh, before we move on to the other items, this is an opportunity for you to engage the Council. If there's anybody who wants to come forward, please just come forward, introduce yourself, and if you could uh, leave your comments to five minutes or less, we'd appreciate that. Would anybody want to engage the council? Well, very good. Thank you for being here. Let's now move on to uh, uh, Councilor Staggers would like two items discussed, uh, and we'll do those now. That was the uh, facade revitalization uh, yes. topic. Councilor Staggers? Yes, I understand Darren Smith is here this evening to explain this further. Good evening, Darren Smith, Director of Community Development. Uh, Councilor Seggers, as, as you know, uh, uh, we proactively sent a memo uh, that was received uh, and I trust read by the City Council yesterday. I, I think it's very uh, concise and does a nice job of explaining uh, these items. Um, so I'm 
if there are additional questions. Well, I guess maybe it was just me. I, I guess I didn't fully understand uh, the um, email, except, you know, in regard to this was part of the TIF. And I, I guess I was not aware that we were going to be doing these facade revitalizations by way of TIF. Can you explain what happened? Well, um, what I will do is explain, again, I want to reiterate a couple things in the email. Uh, first, uh, what is not being asked of the council tonight is the authorization to expend funds. Uh, <coughs> and that's one of the reasons we sent the memo, because I did feel the way this was worded uh, is very misleading. And it leaves you with the impression you're being asked to uh, authorize spending money. You're not. Uh, what you are being asked to do with this is simply accept um, the conveyance of an easement to the city for the facade on two different buildings, uh, Larson Square, the Larson Square building, and the Tri-State Creamery building in the uptown at the Falls uh, area. Um, by the city accepting these easements, as you know, that's how we do the facade easement program, it allows us to identify these facades officially as public assets on the city's financial books. So that's essentially what you're being asked tonight. Now, the other question, um, I guess the, the brief answer would be um, the, these two facade easement projects were originally approved as part of TIF 8, which then became TIF 12. And that was approved two years ago in December. Okay, and this is the only time we've ever done this, is that right? That would, that is my understanding. Okay. Um, I guess personally, I don't know about the rest of the council members, but I guess I'm a little concerned about that we don't do that in the future uh, using the, the TIF for the facade. Well, I'm, uh, it is different than how they've been done in the past. Um, as opposed to CIP sales tax dollars being used for these facades, the developer themselves provided funds. Um, and then they are being reimbursed through the TIF. So again, uh, TIF 8 was, I was not involved in TIF 8 before my time. But uh, when we did TIF 12, again, there were a lot of items involved in that, not only with the current project with the Uptown Exchange Apartments, but uh, that TIF district uh, was larger than the individual footprint of that building. And it took care of some things that were associated with TIF 8, which is a TIF district that was approved back in 2007, 2008, uh, when the Uptown at the Falls RFP was awarded, so a much larger vision and uh, project um, was pursued at that time, but as we all know, that did not come to fruition. And so TIF 8 was dissolved when TIF 12 was created. And also, just one other uh, final question. Um, you're, you're coming up with an, an ordinance here, you know, clarifying things a lot better with, with the um, uh, TIFs. Uh, in the ordinance, do you plan on having any uh, section of the ordinance saying, well, this does not qualify for a TIF or, or uh, anything no, like that? Uh, there will be um, a section, and that's what allows the ordinance to be very brief, quite frankly, is the first uh, paragraph in the ordinance uh, simply states that uh, tax increment finance district statutes are found in state law, and uh, <coughs> those are the laws that govern uh, all cities, including Sioux Falls. And so those are the rules that we must comply with and we plan to comply with. Um, and then it gets into a few other things that, that we're choosing to do at the local level, like an application and, and cost recovery and so forth. Okay, thank you. Councilor Edelman. Yeah, I'd like to thank Darren. Um, Darren Adam did a great job and when he sent out his application. It is my understanding that what we're doing is basically perfecting a lien uh, that we have where we awarded in 2007 the uh, facade easement was granted by a previous city council and we're just honoring uh, the intent of their award in this situation. Is that correct? That is correct. This action allows the city to identify uh, these facades as a public asset on the city's finance books as we've done with all other facade easement projects. Great. Thank you very much, Darren. Thank you. Councilor Anderson, Jr. Darren, let's talk about TIF 12. Uh, when the council approved that, was it uh, worded to allow the use of TIF for 
uh, this type of project? Yes, that was in the TIF plan. The project plan, that's part of the TIF, yes. So now, basically, as we just approved the budget for the facade easement program, that's sales tax dollars, correct? Those are sales tax dollars that you approve. That is oh, correct. Now we, we can now uh, envision adding TIF to that? No. Uh, this is uh, uh, the purchase of an easement, which is what the, you're really doing with the facade easement program, is a TIF eligible expense, always has been. It's just that the city has long had its own facade easement program. In this particular case, uh, for uh, <coughs> whatever reasons there were in 2000 and 2008, uh, 2007 and 2008, this is the direction that uh, they went. But again, I would just stress that, um, yes, it's a, it's a little different than the traditional way that we've done facade easement here, but uh, if you drill down a little further and look at what was done, um, the developer fronted the money for the exterior improvements, the facade improvements versus the city with sales tax dollars. The developer fronted those dollars, got reimbursed later through the TIF. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Councilor Buck. Move to approve. Second. It's been a motion to approve this item, seconded by Councilor <laughs> Entman. Is there any further discussion? Uh, I would Council? just clarify, Mr. Mayor, both yeah. items. Yes, thank My you. My motion is for both items. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Uh, a roll call vote, please. Council members Erpenbach? Yes. Jamison? Yes. Karski? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Entman? Yes. Thank you. That is passed 7 to 0. Item 20. Item 20 is a new 2013-14 retail malt beverage license for Hy-Vee Incorporated Hy-Vee Food Store number 3. 3000 South Minnesota Avenue with conditional use permit 2007 being approved on August 1st, 2007. Item 21 is special one day wine license requests for downtown Sioux Falls Incorporated for the first Friday art walk, art walk to be held on October 4th, 2013 at the following locations. Great Outdoor Store 201 East 10th Street, Young and Richards 222 South Phillips Avenue, Eighth and Railroad Center Lobby 401 East 8th Street, Bead Company, 319 South Phillips Avenue, Zanbros, 209 South Phillips Avenue, Sticks and Steel, 401 East 8th Street, 118, Rayfield's Art and Framing, 210 South Phillips Avenue, Rug and Relic, 401 East 8th Street, Suites, 112, 114, Bookshop, 223 South Phillips Avenue, CH Patisserie, 309 South Phillips Avenue, Cliffhangers Gallery, 126 South Phillips Avenue, Kofia Roastery, 200 South Phillips Avenue, MB, 300 West 11th Street, Home Porch, 217 South Phillips Avenue, NV Salon Studio, 106 West 11th Street, Say Anything Jewelry, 524 North Main Avenue, number 104, Simply Perfect, 401 East 8th Street, number 108, and Orpheum Theater, 315 North Phillips Avenue. Item 22 is a special one-day malt beverage and special one-day wine licenses for Catering America Incorporated, Chef Dominique's to be operated at Nordic Venture Partners, 221 South Phillips Avenue, Suite 202, for a client social on October 10, 2013. Item 23 is a special one-day off-sale package wine license for Prairie Berry, LLC, to be operated at the Sioux Falls Convention Center, 1211 Northwest Avenue, for the Expo for Her, on October 18th and 19th, 2013. Item 24 is a special one-day off-sale package wine license for the White-Headed Robin Winery to be operated at the Sioux Falls Convention Center, 1211 Northwest Avenue, for the Expo for Her on October 18th and 19th, 2013. Item 25 is a special one-day malt beverage and special one-day wine licenses for Catering America Incorporated, Chef Dominic's to be operated at Vance Thompson Vision Artesian 57 Skin and Laser Center, 3101 West 57th Street for an open house on October 15, 2013. Jamie, good evening. Jamie Palmer with licensing. I'm here to answer any questions if you have um, them on items 20 through 25. Move to approve. Gentlemen. Second, Second Aguilar. Councilor Edmonds made a motion to approve this item. Second by Councilor Aguilar, uh, or these items, I'm sorry. Uh, Second by Councilor Aguilar. 
If there is no further discussion, a roll call vote, please. Council Members Erpenbach? Yes. Jamison? Yes. Karski? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Entman? Yes. Thank you. That is passed 7 to 0. Item 26. Item 26 is a second reading. An ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, a major amendment, petition number 2013-0707 to Chapter 160.446, Plan Development Districts at Northwest Corner of West 85th Street and Southwestern Avenue, amending the Three Fountains Plaza Plan Development District regulations and sub-area map. Planning Commission recommends approval. Good evening. I'm Mike Cooper, representing Planning and Building Services. Uh, for this item, the applicant is Joel Dykstra with RMB Associates. And on his behalf and with his authorization, I'd like to request the council to defer this item to the November 5th city council meeting. So moved, Erpenbach. Second, Garski. Thank you very much. Uh, Councilor Erpenbach has made a motion to defer item, this item for until Tuesday, November 5th, and it was seconded by Councilor Karski. Is there any discussion? A roll call vote, please. Council members Erpenbach? Yes. Jamison? Yes. Karski? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Entman? Yes. Thank you. Then it's passed 7 to 0. Item 27. Item 27 is a second reading, an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, rezoning the property at 801 and 823 <coughs> North Harlem Avenue from the RD Residential District to the I-1 Light Industrial District, petition number 2013-0808 and amending the official zoning map of the City of Sioux Falls. Planning Commission recommends approval. Uh, the applicant for this rezoning is Lori, Lanny Oringer, and the property is located on the west side of Harlem Avenue, uh, just west of 2nd Street. It's approximately 1.4 acres in size. Uh, we've done two previous rezonings in this area, from residential to light industrial, again in anticipation of redeveloping this property for future warehouse or other similar uses. Uh, this parcel is adjacent to um, a previous zoning change that the council approved on September 3rd. And again, the intent would be to put these parcels together with a new development uh, proposal that would allow traffic access to be from the south side, avoiding uh, more residential traffic on Harlem as well as West 2nd Street. Uh, we did have public input at the Planning Commission meeting. And I think, again, the neighborhood concerns was truck traffic, parking along the residential streets, and we also attributed some of that to the Kiwanis Avenue construction project that's underway. So tonight, we're asking the council to consider changing this from residential to light industrial, and the Planning Commission has recommended approval of the zoning change. Mike, thank you. This is a second reading. Would anybody want to speak to this item in the audience? Very good, Council. I'll leave it in your hands. Councilor Anderson, uh, Councilor Karski. Mike, when we, like you said, rezone the property to the south of there, <clears throat> the access was going to be from the south. Is there a plan for access off of uh, Harlem Avenue into this property? No, the intent would be to, to keep it on the south side from 3rd Street going north. Okay, thank you. Councilor Anderson, Jr. Mike, uh, over the last few weeks, I've been watching those two streets, Harlem and 2nd Avenue, and I've noticed on multiple occasions uh, semis. This isn't part of the construction part. This is enclosed semis, especially along 2nd Avenue, parking them there and, and being running. Is there anything we can do about, uh, <coughs> you know, we were talking about parking there. Is there any signage that we can put up to you know, uh, at least try to keep that down as, as much as possible? What we can do is we can work with, uh, with our traffic engineering folks as well as the property owners. And, well, first of all, we'll find out who's operating the trucks, why are they there, and then we can work with traffic engineering and the property owners to look at some additional signage. So we would be happy to, to initiate that process after tonight. Now, when, when or if the council does approve this, Will this go to a conditional use permit so that the neighborhood has a little more insight on exactly what's going to happen there? As we look at the, the size of the redevelopment parcel, uh, typically those kind of uses would require a conditional use permit, especially in, in proximity to residential areas like this. Okay. Thank you. Councilor, thank you. We'll Council, approve Entman. Thank you, Councilor. Second. Councilor Edmonds made a motion to approve this item, seconded by Councilor Anderson, Jr. 
There's been good discussion. A roll call vote, please. Council members Erpenbach? Yes. Jamison? Yes. Karski? Yes. Stagers? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Entman? Yes. Thank you. That is passed 7 to 0. Item 28. Item 28 is a second reading, an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota rezoning property at East Dyke Drive and North Quarry Avenue from the Granite Valley Plan Development District to the I-1 Light Industrial District, petition number 2013-815, and amending the official zoning map of the City of Sioux Falls. Planning Commission recommends approval. Uh, Jim Dunham is the applicant on this property request for rezoning in the Granite Valley development. And on, uh, with his request and on his behalf, I'd also like to request a deferral of this item to the November 5th City Council meeting. So moved, Aguilar. Second, Karski. Councilor Aguilar has uh, made a motion to defer this item to Tuesday, November 5th, and it was seconded by Councilor Karski. A uh, roll call vote, please. Council members Erpenbach? Yes. Jamison? Yes. Karski? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Entman? Yes. Thank you. That has passed 7 to 0. Item 29. Item 29 is a second reading, an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, rezoning property at 600 West 81st Street from the RS2 Residential and Garden Village 2 PD District to the RC Recreation Conservation and RS2 Residential District, petition number 2013-811, and amending the official zoning map of the City of Sioux Falls. Planning Commission recommends approval. The applicant is Preston Mettler, who is developing this particular area as a residential uh, area. This is a couple of remnants of property, just over one acre in total size. It's just northwest of the Landscape Garden Center. Um, approximately 0.8 acres is going to be for the existing detention area. Uh, the balance of the property will be used for a future residential lot. Thank you, Mike. Another second reading, folks. Anybody interested in speaking this item? Very good. Council? Move for approval, Anderson. Second, Karski. Councilor Anderson, Jr. has made a motion to approve item 29, seconded by Councilor Karski. If there is no further discussion on roll approval, please. Council members Erpenbach? Yes. Jamison? Yes. Karski? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Entman? Yes. Thank you, Council. That is passed 7 to 0. Item 30. Item 30 is a second reading. An ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, rezoning property at 1801 South Katy Avenue from the A1 Agricultural District to the RS2 Residential District, petition number 2013-85, and amending the official zoning map of the City of Sioux Falls. Planning Commission recommends approval. This is an applicant submitted by Rejoice Lutheran Church. It's about five acres of land area west of Marion Road on the south side of West 26th Street. We're rezoning it for a future church site. Thank you, Mike. Uh, another second reading. <coughs> Very good, Council. Move to approve, Karski. Second, Entman. Councilor Karski would like to um, make a motion to approve this item, seconded by Councilor Entman. If there is no discussion, a roll call vote, please. Council members Erpenbach? Yes. Jamison? Yes. Karski? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Entman? Yes. Thank you, Council. That has passed 7 to 0. Item 31. Item 31, a resolution of support for the creation of the 2025 downtown plan. Again, Mike Cooper with Planning and Building Services. Uh, this is a team presentation tonight with Darren Smith uh, in downtown Sioux Falls. About 10 years ago, the city council adopted the 2015 downtown plan. And that plan set out a vision and some goals for the future of downtown, recognizing downtown as the center of business, government, housing, entertainment, and shopping. And we wanted downtown to become a, an accessible area for parking that was convenient to get to, and as well as a safe and attractive place. A lot of changes have occurred over the last 10 years, and as we're now approaching the end of the planning period, we need to set out a new vision, taking a look at what should the future of downtown be to the year 2025. Uh, a lot of things are going on now. We have a number of residential projects going on downtown. We have the uptown development that has not been completed yet. We're talking about uh, master planning Falls Park West towards Phillips Avenue. Um, we're looking at Minnesota Avenue corridor, the Weber Avenue corridor, the downtown Greenway, another phase of that. 
And then, of course, with the rail yard redevelopment potential that hopefully we can move forward with that. So there's a lot of exciting opportunity for the future of downtown. And we want to bring forward a process to allow us to answer those questions. What should the future vision be for downtown to the year 2025? And so um, that's what we're intending to do starting tonight. And Darren Smith is going to talk about uh, that planning process as we move forward. Thank you. Well, just very briefly, we are uh, very anxious to kick off the, the plan process and get going. I, I don't think there's ever been a more exciting time in downtown Sioux Falls than now and what we know the future uh, holds. Um, and one of the things particularly we're uh, very anxious about uh, um, in, in getting going with this plan is the citizen input. Uh, these plans are really only as, uh, only as good as the input you have from the community. They have to be led by citizens, they have to be uh, led by the community, or they won't be bought into and ultimately won't be successful. So I just wanted to touch very briefly on uh, the visual you have in front of you. Um, there will be a citizen advisory committee of 13 members. Uh, you have that group as a part of the resolution in front of you. It's a very diverse group um, in terms of ages, blonde hair, dark hair, gray hair, um, uh, something for everybody. Uh, small businesses, large businesses, planning commission members, city council member, and others. It's a, it's a very good group. There will be as many as a dozen work groups and subcommittees, all citizen work groups and subcommittees, focused on a number of different topics, uh, ranging from the public parking system to the parks system, economic development, health and wellness, land use, streets, housing, public safety, historic preservation, the arts and culture, entertainment, and so forth. Um, and those will get going very soon as well. There will be a great deal of community-wide input, and we're going to accomplish this in two different ways. Uh, we will hold public meetings, as you would expect us to, not only downtown, but around uh, uh, all parts of the community. But we won't just rely on you finding us at these public meetings. We will also be going out and seeking public input where the public is. Uh, beginning this Saturday, for example, our staff will have a kiosk at Farmer's Market downtown. Uh, we'll be back at the East Bank Farmer's Market a couple weeks after that on October 19th. You'll see us over the next 12 to 15 month period at the Empire Mall and all kinds of community events throughout, throughout Sioux Falls seeking public input from the citizens to help form this plan. Um, the last two things I would touch on, uh, we will have the assistance of professional facilitation to help us throughout this process. We feel that's very important and also professional market analysis that will be conducted as a part of this process and that is something we've, we've uh, never really had done. Lastly, uh, there will be a number of opportunities for the citizens to follow us so if they don't come to a public meeting, we don't find them somewhere. They can follow everything we're doing on a new website um, that is, it can be found on the city's website at SiouxFalls.org and then also of course on Facebook and Twitter. They can find more information and we'll be communicating uh, information out to them through Facebook and Twitter as well. Um, and if I can, I'd like to ask Jason uh, Dennison, President of Downtown Sioux Falls, to come up. Uh, he's also a partner in this effort. Jason, welcome. Thanks, Mayor. Members of City Council, Jason Dennison, President of Downtown Sioux Falls. Uh, our downtown serves as the heart of our community and the core of civic life. Our downtown is home to a variety of restaurants, retail shops, and professional services. Our downtown serves as a gathering place for our community and hosts a variety of events and festivals. To effectively serve so many functions, downtown must be planned in a strategic manner and carefully maintained. And because it serves, and serves many different groups, a market analysis is critical to achieve our vision for a vibrant city core that is based on realistic expectations. Uh, appreciate your support on this uh, project, working really closely with the city uh, for the last 10 years to uh, implement the plans in the 2015 plan and together we've witnessed the power of partnerships and working together. So we are grateful for your support and look forward to working with you throughout this process. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Darren or Mike, is there anybody else who wanted to speak to this item? Is there anyone in the audience who wanted to speak to this item? Very good. Council, I'm leave it in your hands. Uh, any comments or questions? Move approval, Aguilar. Second, Erpenbach. Councilor Aguilar has made a motion to approve this item and it was seconded by Councilor uh, Erpenbach. Uh, Councilor Jamison. I just had a uh, comment, having Jason, Mike, and Darren here, the, uh, uh, the, one of the thoughts I had, and I know there'll be plenty of time for this to come later, but 
Dakota and Maine serving as two one-way streets. You're going to be talking about that. That's, I think, a great opportunity for us to, uh, all right, and then the yeah, nodding heads. Very good. Thank you. Councilor, thank you. Councilor Staggers. Yes, I was just curious as to um, how these people were selected to be on the uh, Citizen Advisory Committee. Mike or Darren? Uh, sure. Uh, good question. Uh, our staff and community development, uh, Planning staff, we work with businesses and individuals downtown and throughout the community on a daily basis, as you might imagine. Um, also, downtown Sioux Falls is the other key partner in all of this, has uh, a few hundred members and also dealing with businesses and individuals downtown. So uh, collectively, we cast a wide net um, and looked at a number of different names um, and considered those and recommended those to the mayor. So they were appointed by the mayor. Is that fair to say? Correct. Okay. Um, also, <clears throat> my understanding is that this committee is supposed to last for, what, 12 months, 15 months, or what? Yes, it will, uh, it will essentially have a lifespan of the duration of this project, and we would anticipate that being approximately 12 months, maybe as much as 15 months. Okay. So it's very much an ad hoc uh, committee or advisory group, if you will. Is there any particular reason why you didn't put a, a, uh, a deadline on this committee um, because right now the way it is, it's in perpetuity. It just keeps going on and on and on and on. Is there any reason why we didn't say December 31st, 2014 or whatever the case might be? No particular reason. I think these folks understand the temporary nature of this. In fact, when we're done, we may have a hard time convincing them to, to uh, work any further with us. But um, no, there's no particular reason. I think they understand the, the duration of the project and what they're being asked. Okay. Thank you. Darren, maybe to Councilor Stager's question, uh, or Mr. Cooper, maybe you'd be more appropriate. What happened with the, with the last plan? Did the subcommittee <laughs> kind of go away, or, or what happened then? Once the plan is presented to the council and adopted, then that committee is dissolved. Okay. And that would be the same with this. So the purpose of the committee is to put together the recommendation that will eventually come back to the council. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good question, Councilor Stegers. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments? Councilor Stegers? Yeah, I, I guess just one final comment, and that is, first of all, we, we have to recognize that we've spent millions and millions of dollars on downtown already. A lot of money. And when you take a look at this... Uh, 2025 downtown plan that's going to be developed. I mean, it's just a vehicle to spend more money on the downtown. Now, you can only spend so much money on downtown because there's, you know, there's not many empty spaces downtown to, to develop. So I suspect probably a lot of this is going to be on the 10 acres that we're going to be uh, getting from the uh, railroad relocation. And uh, once again, I, I, I think we've already spent enough tax money on the downtown that uh, we don't have to spend anymore. Pretty good. Well, Council, thank you. Uh, good discussion. There has been a motion to approve. It has been seconded. Uh, been good discussion. A roll call vote, please. Council Member Zerpenbach? Yes. Jameson? Yes. Karski? Yes. Sagers? No. Aguilar? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Entman? Yes. That has passed six to one. Thank you. Council that, no, I'm sorry, uh, item 32. Item 32 is a report of the September 24th, 2013 Notice of Transfer of Appropriations with Major Organizational Units. Council, thank, any other comments, Council? Uh, move to adjourn. Is there a second on that? Second. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Councilor Edmonds made a motion to adjourn our meeting and it was seconded by Councilor Karski. Uh, if there's no discussion, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you, Council. Thank you, Sioux Falls. This meeting is adjourned. Make it a great evening. <laughs>